I want to thank all my fellow leaders uh, for their partnership and their commitment uh, to making the TPP a reality. If President Obama, the IMF, and legions of New World Order stalwarts have their way, your job, your children's future, and the future of the United States will be assimilated to the corporocratic Borg. Obama is diligently attempting to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership passed. The single greatest challenge for the United States right now, and my highest priority as president, is creating jobs and putting Americans back to work. And one of the best ways to do that is to increase our trade and exports with other nations. 95% of the world's consumers are beyond our borders. I want them to be buying goods with three words stamped on them, made in America. Corporations are heavily lobbying for the deal as legislative sycophants pawns of their corporate masters like John Boehner. Uh, making sure uh, that these kids have a shot at the American dream, like I did, it's important. Rally support for a trade agreement that will make NAFTA look like child's play. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to announce my introduction of and request co-sponsors for a privileged resolution to withdraw the United States from the World Trade Organization. By what authority does the World Trade Organization assume jurisdiction over the United States federal tax policy? That's the question. At last reading, the Constitution required that all appropriations bill originate in the House and specify that only Congress has the power to lay and collect taxes. Taxation without representation was a predominant reason for America's fight for independence during the American Revolution. Yet now we face an unconstitutional delegation of taxing authority to an unelected body of international bureaucrats. Let me assure you, Mr. Speaker, this nation does not need yet another bureaucratic hurdle to tax reduction. It's very hard to make anything of the TPP because it's been kept very secret. Uh, half secret, I should say. It's not secret from the hundreds of corporate lawyers and lobbyists who are writing the legislation. To them, it's perfectly public. They're, in fact, writing it. It's being kept secret from the population. High-wage American workers and union members would face more direct competition from low-wage Malaysian, Vietnamese, and Mexican workers because the partnership would create a free trade zone with no tariffs or barriers. The treaty would give corporations a direct way to object to and even override individual countries' democratically passed laws. An international tribunal would have the power to overrule individual nations' legal standards and impose economic penalties. That power would be the cornerstone of an unelected corporocratic New World Order. I wish people could remember what the border looked like between Texas and Mexico before and after. And it was poor, really poor, on both sides of the border. If you go down there today, there's prosperity on both sides of the border, and that's in our nation's interests. We have the opportunity to remake the world. For this new era, our national security, we now know, will be determined as much by our ability to pull down foreign trade barriers is by our, our ability to breach distant ramparts. The devastation the U.S. economy and the Mexican economy suffered under NAFTA is shocking. Another corporatocracy program chipping away at the U.S. jobs economy is the abuse of the H-1B visa work program. For example, at the end of October 2014, IT employees at Disney parks and resorts were replaced by imported cheap labor they had to train as they were laid off. Disney CEO Bob Iger is one of eight co-chairs of the Partnership for a New American Economy, a leading group advocating for an increase in the H-1B visa cap. One of the briefing documents made this claim. H-1B workers complement instead of displace U.S. workers. It explains that as employers use foreign workers to fill more technical and low-level jobs, firms are able to expand and allow U.S. workers to assume managerial and leadership positions. But the workers interviewed said they knew of few co-workers who had landed one of the new jobs. Several of the workers in interviews said they didn't want to appear as xenophobic, but couldn't help but to observe, as one did, that there were times when I didn't hear English spoken in the hallways. As the layoff date neared, I really felt like a foreigner in that building. 
the worker said. John Bound, Infowars.com. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks, I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level.